On the repair bench is a 1942 Zenith Transoceanic Clipper, model 7G605. And this one is the bomber. And I just completed a total electronic restoration of this radio. It's like brand new, so it deserved a quality restoration job. And I spent hours and hours and hours on this thing. And uh, not only did it get a total recap, but it just went underwent a total IF and RF alignment with the aid of my frequency counter and my night signal generator. So, if you want to take a look here, here's the recap job. I use only Sprague orange drops. And as you can see, there's quite a number of them. Also have Sprague Atom Electrolytics installed as well. And when I do recaps, I remove every bit of the original capacitor. And the new capacitors, as you can see, get directly soldered to the lugs and terminals. So it's like a factory installation. A radio as nice as this deserves the best. So I don't like taking shortcuts in my restoration work. As you can see I got it hooked up to batteries right now. The radio just survived so well for the years. In fact, here is the uh, here's the case for it, and it's equipped even with a nice piece of asbestos paper on the bottom. So I'm pretty cautious around that. It's glued down, so it's not like I'm going to be able to just take it out and remove it. So it's original, so it stays that way. Why they put it there is kind of beyond me in the first place. Grab this here. Inside the box here, these are all my original capacitors and dry rotted wires that were replaced on the chassis as well. So a whole bunch of stuff here. You can see these original wires. They're just in, a lot of them are in just bad shape. They just all cracked. And only the yellow wires are the ones that I had problems with. All the other wires were nice and flexible yet. So you can see to this coil here and into this antenna switch and some of these um, filament voltage leads all got new wires. And the capacitors also I put shrink sleeve insulation on the ends or on the leads because these are radial caps the originals are axials so lead dress is a little more critical with these radials but I like spray orange drops because they're made in USA and I'm not going to put cheap foreign made capacitors into an all-american radio it's just not right so and here's my signal generator that I use I was able to set the oscillator on all the shortwave frequencies, which were actually, yeah, they were off by about 500 kilohertz. So, considering its age, let's see here. And I also set the um, 455 kilocycle with this instrument and even though this is an analog scale it's not really accurate so I was able to make it more accurate than it was at the factory with the aid of this um, frequency counter and you can see the cameras kind of moving everywhere here trying to do trying to manipulate stuff here while holding the camera steady is kind of hard if I attach my leads 
Hold on a minute. By attaching the leads on the signal generator to the RF generator, there we go, I can now pinpoint my frequencies. I can put that thing right on 455, or pretty darn close to it. And I got a gate time of one tenth of a second. Obviously, if I make it a little longer, like one second. I can get even more precise. So it's very handy. So basically, if I set this thing to as close as I can to 455, <clears throat> which that's pretty decent right there, my scale actually is relatively decent on 455 but as the frequencies go up the deviation is a lot worse like I can put this thing you know we can we can go for something high frequency like uh, yeah let's let's go for like 13 megahertz something like that that's good enough and if I decrease my gate time it's a little more responsive there we go There you go, there's 13,000. Well, you can see on my scale, scale D, not like 14,100. So, as you can see, you're kind of considerably off. So, the oscillator in my generator needs to be aligned. But that's no big deal, because I got the frequency counter. But anyway, back to the radio. I use that and you set the oscillator slugs. For each one of the shortwave bands, and uh, you set your 455 kilocycles, and you set your band on uh, on AM, tune it to 600 kilohertz, and then you adjust your four uh, trimmer capacitors in your IF uh, cans here, and you simply just attach your voltmeter to the voice coil of the speaker, and you just adjust for peak. Uh, peak response and after that you adjust your oscillator on your tuner you adjust your uh, detector which is your middle uh, gain and then your antenna trimmer right there well it's all done everything works good so we could turn this thing on And with the one volt tubes, you have instantaneous warm up like this thing, solid state. You see, there's the wave magnet. And forget to ask us about the nice sharp tuning now. That's what you want. Money back, even if you don't die. Since 19. I'm one of those guys that likes to play the practice. Your vehicle. Why not? Because I'm a wolf. Times 100 or times 10. What a great DXing radio this will be now. The frequency. So, uh, and then how many, I mean, I don't know that, you know, you can give a, a, a figure on that, but. Uh, I wonder what the percentage is of the number of people... Believe it or not, when I was adjusting this thing, I wasn't able to get the uh, oscillator to go on, uh, on the 25-meter band because my 1LE3 was uh, faulty. It wouldn't oscillate up at that frequency. So, there it is, all done. And ready for reinstallation into the cabinet.